All right, let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Miranda and welcome to my crash course on building communities, um, retention and growth in a nutshell. Um, so I have about 10 years of experience working in the tech sector and I figured I would like, uh, I'd love, I figured I'd share some of my learnings and lessons um, based on my experience. Uh, I consider myself a Swiss army knife of marketing but I particularly enjoy working with building communities because it involves all the things. Um, so quickly, just very quickly, a little bit about myself um, uh, and my achievements, most importantly, because first of all, why would you wanna to listen to me? Uh, well, for one, I started back in 2013. I started the one of the longest running um, and probably the first podcast about virtual reality. Um, I was able to grow it, complete, grow it completely organically to about 22,000 followers. And it enabled me the ability to um, build my own community and do a lot of A-B testing. I had this sort of virtual sandbox that allowed me to do a lot of A-B testing of my marketing techniques on this community that I was able to grow. Uh, aside from that, I was able to uh, put together a nonprofit uh, in San Francisco called the Metaverse Scholars Club and alongside my friends we grew that through a meetup to about 600 members uh, just wholly teaching classes and throwing an event here and there um, and that was really cool uh, which led to actually bringing this giant uh, or very uh, extensive art installation to the middle of the desert where I led a group of 30 uh, with the help of my friends obviously uh, a group of 30 people and putting together this um, grand mixed reality experience out in the desert. Um, I've also worked for a virtual reality vision, vision therapy company um, and I was able to help them get to their first million dollars in revenue with my marketing tactics uh, with Facebook ads some influencer marketing some uh, some events and um, yeah, in 2016, we were probably one of the first companies to break through a million dollars. So that was really exciting. Uh, I've also been able to work for with really small teams up to down to two people all the way to globally distributed teams um, with hundreds of employees. Uh, with one of them, um, the smaller companies, I, I, in two months, I was able to get their Discord community from 15 users all the way to 2000. Uh, I also worked for a company, uh, a Google Ventures augmented reality company, and I was able to get their user base from zero to 10,000 in nine months using very minimal marketing dollars. Um, so I'm very proud about that. Let's see, I uh, was able to work for a graph database company and I uh, led their largest ever virtual conference for their community. And all in all, I've just been, uh, did my best and I've been doing my best to be a really good conduit between uh, the user base, the community, and the dev team, the design team, and everyone else involved. Because honestly, communities are sort of the lighthouse for products and organizations. If they, they guide, they help guide the best directions the product uh, ultimately should go in, right? Because these are the people who are going to adopt what you're creating. Um, and so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and go through my slides um, and uh, hopefully this will provide you with some value and insight as to what it takes to grow a community here today in the 21st century. So let's start with the first one. Um, so the first slide is, is uh, Lucas Risotto. He's an augmented reality, virtual reality developer. Uh, really well known I uh, and he put out a tweet a while ago saying to build a community is to continuously give others more than you take if you aren't doing that then you aren't building a community you are just looking for customers the thing about this tweet that really speaks to me is the realization that a lot of companies don't know the distinction the difference between a community and customers a grocery store, your local grocery store, liquor store, they have customers, people who come and go, come and go, but they're not invested, so to speak, in the success of that business. If one liquor store doesn't provide the thing that I need or just doesn't give the service that I want, I'm just gonna go next door. Whereas a community, on the other hand, 
is invested in your success because they see their success tied to yours. How that happens ultimately comes down to how much they feel you're invested in them. So it's a very much a, a symbiosis, a, a symbiotic relationship. Um, and it's not rocket science, but it's hard work. And I'm going to tell you how to do it. Most importantly, I think it's important to recognize that the marketing game has changed. Uh, the ad market is saturated. Um, and so companies are now looking for ways to, you know, grow and scale, but also keep people coming back. Right. And so that's where community comes in. So let's go ahead and uh, break it down into three parts. Right. So the first part is finding. How do you find your community for your product organization? Well, first off, you start off by leveraging the, co the, the community you already have. Um, and gain that feedback to see if it's insightful or valuable for you uh, because it might point you in the right direction. Um, it's also really important. It's actually the most important thing is to ask these following two questions. Who is your product for and why? And here's the thing. If you're able to answer the first question, right, with data, like why is it that X, Y, and Z want to keep coming back to your product service organization and you have data to back that up then you're set up for success it's very easy to be led on by your assumptions of the market or your assumptions of the different persona types um, based on your own bias without having data um, that could lead to uh, troublesome waters so to speak so it's very important to Leverage data as much as possible in the very beginning because you want to point your marketing cannons in the right direction so you can hit that mark, you know. Um, on top of that, you want to combine that with market research you know, to be able to get that bird's eye view of, of the industry that you're a part of. A part of. Um, you want to perform competitor analysis because obviously you want to see what your competitors are doing and if you are, uh, and if they're being successful, then you want to you know, replicate that, remix that, improve on that, and see what kinds of communities they're targeting, right? Because again, it's 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 very similar. It'll run parallel with what, whatever it is that you're building. Um, so let's talk about, or let's let's see what that looks like visualized. So right here, I put together a little graph that shows uh, the nodes and the uh, the nodes being sort of the stages, and then the the edges are the campaign. So here's planning, then you execute basing it a campaign, then you look at the results and then you iterate. And then you plan, you execute results, iterate. And so what you're doing is you're climbing up a ladder until you find the group of people that are gonna be ultimately your community. So now, now let's talk about growing. How do you grow a community? This is very important, um, actually, the most important thing. <laughs> um, and I put together, I peppered in a couple or a few general ideas that have worked for me in the past, um, just to sort of provide an example as to what it might take to grow a community. Uh, things like attending industry events, uh, places where you can meet the press, uh, connect with them, right? Get featured uh, uh, on their uh, media sites. Uh, places where you can talk to other companies or other developers or other people in your industry that might allow you to cross collaborate and do cross marketing and um, share mailing lists, things like that. And ultimately find people that are platform owners. So if your product, game, service, whatever is on Steam or it's on the App Store, you want to find the representatives of those places because building relationships with them could lead to you being featured in the app store or being featured on Steam, things like that. So it's all about managing and creating relationships. Um, no company is an island. You need bridges, right? And so relationships with different people and different organizations are those bridges to get you to where you want to go um, or get people to you. <laughs> Um, you want to use relevant hashtags uh, on socials. This is a whole thing. Yeah, there's a whole field of work called social media managers that talk about or work on optimizing the best ways to get you views on social media. And so hashtags is very important. Following influencers is very important. Communicating and being part of the conversations um, 
that are happening on social media is very important. Um, and so, yeah, we can go deep, deep down that rabbit hole, but we'll continue. Um, you want to create educational content that goes viral. You want to create novel and entertaining content that goes viral. Um, and these two tie together to the, the next one I'm going to say is tailoring content around the most commonly asked questions. Because how do you make educational content or entertaining, entertaining content that goes viral? You know, there's this, uh, uh, I think there's a, there's, it doesn't come from a vacuum. You know, it doesn't come from the ether. And, and the best viral content comes from the questions and feedback that are already out there uh, being asked of you. And so if you can turn those questions and feedback into content, then your users or your potential community feels as though you're already inside their minds. And when they feel that way, it allows them to lower their guard and trust you a bit more. Um, so it's really important to do that. Um, on top of that, you want to leverage content influencers, collaborate with adjacent communities, running ads, partner with other modding, for example, modding communities. Um, in order to, and the reason why you want to partner with other communities is because if there's relevancy between them and what they value in your product or service, then you'll be able to funnel a, 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 a good chunk of those, uh, those users over to your your product and so that's really important let me show you what growing looks like a little bit more visualized um here's a graph you'll have the uh, the one one axis is users the other is time uh, and over time you're gonna have these nodes that represent our users each edge represents a campaign and so let's say we start with 10 users right we'll launch a campaign um and then we'll give us 100 users and then we'll want to A B test on different versions of that campaign. One will give us 150, the other one gives us 200. Obviously, we're going to double down on the one gives us the most traction. And so we're going to, again, be climbing that ladder, that um, marketing dialectic, so to speak, until we find our way to our goal uh, target audience uh, numbers. And let me show you what that looks like even uh, more zoomed in, right? Because I my methodology involves a very similar version or mo like a very much the bullseye model of marketing. And this was uh, created by Gabriel, Gabriel Weinberg. You can look him up. He's the creator of DuckDuckGo. Um, DuckDuckGo was able to reach 11% of the search engine market uh, a little while ago. Um, and it was and they did it with very minimal marketing dollars, again, um, using the bullseye method. And the bullseye method entails something like this. For our purposes, and everything here is interchangeable. Like, you know, community building doesn't need to be at the core, but because it's a community building presentation, it'll be at the core, right? Um, and so we'll be, uh, what we'll be doing is we'll con consistently every month or two months, we'll be running very easy to produce, very cheap, um, uh, yeah, very cheap, uh, very easy to put together uh, marketing experiments. Um, based on these different marketing channels. And the one experiment that gets us stickiness or gets us traction, then we're going to double down. So at the core, we're always going to be working on community building types of campaigns and strategies. But along the way, in the middle ring, we'll have this sort of like a staging area where we're going to be also experimenting with some viral marketing we're, we're going to be experimenting with social and display ads we're going to be experimenting with seo um and we'll have this sort of cycling where in the outer ring this is where we're sort of researching and we're getting ready the next uh layer or the next steps or the next campaigns that are going to be cycling cycling through every other month or every month um and eventually again you know we'll find the tactic technique channel that gives us traction we double down until it's saturated and then we move on doing a lot of it's a lot of uh science uh experimentation data driven sort of approach uh, a b testing uh, so you just want to let the data guide you on this one um, and it's been very effective in my career and i highly encourage people exploring this there's a whole book called traction um, and if you have any questions about my experience with it, I'd be more than happy to share uh, all my learnings.
So that's bullseye. Let's talk about nurturing, right? Because it's important to know that, yeah, like growing is, it's, is awesome, right? But like, I would rather have, <coughs> excuse me, I would rather have a thousand people. Uh, I'd rather have a thousand people, you know, consistently being a part of my community, coming back over and over than 20,000 people, 30,000 people that show up one day and never come back, right? And so how do you do that? How do you nurture uh, and how do you get people to keep coming back? Um, some ideas that have worked for me in the past include hosting hackathons and competitions, um, having a robust Q&A user forum on, on your site, creating a portal where people can upload their demos so they can be publicly learned from and be appreciated um, by better community community analytics so we can track the power users and keep them happy. I'll go into power users very soon in the more detail. You want to host meetups and bring in guest speakers that will give interesting talks. You want to promote user generated content on social media or on the website. You want to create learning uh, a, a learning portal um, so it's just easier to onboard people. Uh, you want to listen to feedback and visibly incorporate it into your product. And you want to develop one-on-one -on -one relationship with users. And specifically, you want to develop one-on-one -on -one relationships with your power users. So it's important to really nail down what it is that we're doing. We're making people feel heard, right? So when they give us feedback and we're then incorporating that feedback into our product um, or addressing it in blog posts and things like that, people feel heard, right? And you want to make people feel seen. You want to make people feel seen when they're creating content based on your, with your product, when they're sharing that on social media. You want to like make sure that you know we're hyping them up. <laughs> and you want to make people feel valued. Um, and how you do that is if people are sharing their success with your product, you want to put them on a pedestal. You want to collaborate with them. You want to work with them because what you want to you want what you want to show the other people in the community is that hey look this is what success looks like and you can be just like them too um, and so it's very important to be able to uh, make people feel seen make people feel heard and make people feel valued and uh, eventually people will take ownership over your product and they'll just keep coming back um, and they'll bring their friends along with them so that's nurturing and I'm going to show you my last slide on what the ideal community looks like. Uh, so this is what your community looks like. This is a, this node is your community, right? And you're going to have this, uh, these other sub nodes and what, what it would look like is, uh, in every community, you're going to have trolls. It's just, it's just a fact. Um, but trolls are easy to deal with because they're going to cause drama. Drama brings the band hammer and the band hammer of Thor falls down upon them and they're gone. <laughs> um, then there's dark matter. Dark matter is something inherent about humanity that you just can't predict. There's no algorithm, there's no data. Somewhere, someplace in your Discord or your Slack or your community forums, there's someone from the Nigerian government or there's someone from the United Nations or there's someone from some really big company that you had no idea would find a use case for you, but they do and they'll reach out. And so you want to keep an eye out for that dark matter. Um, but then there's going to be casuals. And casuals are the majority. They're going to be the majority of, of your community. And that's okay. Um, because casuals are contribute something very important. And that is, um, my camera is blocking it. But it, right here it says questions and feedback. They're going to show up with questions and feedback. And what you're going to do with those questions and feedback is you're going to capture it with your marketing team. And they're going to turn that into content and actions which goes back to the casuals which hopefully will turn them a few of them into power users now the thing about power users is that in order to grow a big community in order to scale you want to be able to plant strong roots right so you want to be able to invest a lot into the well-being and the success of these power users these people that are really invested in your success um, because what's going to happen is that power users are going to bring out demos, for example, they'll create content and they'll, and they'll, and they'll put together and they'll bring, give you growth. Um, and ultimately the three things that are almost invaluable that power users will bring are, are the following. 
Um, this is why we want, the ultimate goal is to create as many power users as possible. You want to be able to, power users are going to, uh, one, be your reputation management uh, team, <laughs> de facto. They'll be out on social media. If someone is saying something nasty or mean about your product, they're going to be out there defending you. They'll be out, they'll be out you, you know, defending your reputation because they'll see themselves tied to, again, your success. And it's very important to realize that, like, if I work for you uh, as an employee and I'm out there defending you on social media, people already are going to know that I have a bias, right? But if it's someone else and it's someone, uh, someone from the public, um, then that will give them uh, a lot more authority and trust amongst people who are would otherwise not. Um, and so that's one. Uh, number two is that they will be your de facto customer service because uh, as a community manager, if you have a really, really big community, there's only so much uh, as, as a human being I'll be able to do to answer as many questions as possible, you know, especially if it's a global uh, uh, product that you have and there's people from all over the world, you know, you can't have your team be up at four in the morning on a Sunday. So your customers, so your community members, your POW users will be out there providing that sort of, uh, uh, that help, that value to people that are that need to get on board or have questions. And so that that's not the number two, and number three is they'll be your de facto sales force team. They'll be out bringing their friends along with them, selling the product for you, um, and that and, and combined these three things have enormous value that I think is almost intangible. It's hard to put a a, a number on it, a dollar value on it, but this is why communities are important. This is why companies are waking up to realizing that oh yeah we really need to have a community not just customers you know um and my hope is that this helps people uh understand what it means to grow a community and and hopefully what success looks like um and if you have any questions i'd be happy to answer them please please reach out anytime um that's the end of my tech talk and i thank you so much i hope you have a great great day and I'll catch you around. Bye.